Farmers spend hours planting, spraying, fertilizing, scouting, and harvesting to raise a crop. But what happens to all that crop after it's harvested? Each individual kernel of corn and soybean seed that my farm harvests, as well as many other farms around the world, end up in structures like these behind me, which are known as grain bins. And if you've ever driven around rural areas, you've probably seen some grain bins, but if you haven't, know that they come in many different sizes and shapes, and the demand is for larger and larger sizes of them. Now you might think you already know farmers just build bins to store their grain, but there's a lot more that goes into it, which we'll get into later in the video, such as ability to blend, ability to dry, ability to store for longer periods of time. But before we get into that, if we haven't met, allow me to introduce myself. My name's Matthias. I'm a 24 year old fifth generation farmer, and this is my family's grain setup here in Southern Minnesota. Now that you know a little bit about me and know that these are grain bins and not silos, which I should mention silos are the taller structures, which are more so designed for high moisture corn, silage, and other feed ingredients for livestock, just because they're a lot harder to flow through wider grain bins like the ones that are more standardized in production. Let's dive into why farmers build these things. First and foremost, grain bins are used for storage and preservation, which on my farm, they store and preserve the two crops we raise, corn and soybeans. The grain bins at my farm, as well as other farms, could also be used to hold things like sorghum, millet, sunflowers, wheat, Basically, they're just large holding tanks to store grain and can be switched between commodities without having to make any major modifications. I came down to the soybean field because I know somebody's thinking it. Matthias, why not just harvest your crops when you're ready to sell them, ready to harvest them, ready to bring them to town, rather than going through the whole effort of building bins, putting the corn in the bin, taking it out. Would that work? Take this corn field that I'm in, for example. It's going to be... October, November before this corn is fully matured and ready for us to harvest. But if we were to just leave this corn out in the field until eight, nine months later when we're actually ready to take this corn to town, what's gonna happen is a lot of the corn plants are gonna start to decompose and we're gonna have a lot of corn just laying over, leaning on the ground. Some of the ears eventually start to fall off, which is a problem. Not only that, but next year at this time, we hope to be raising some soybeans out here, so we need to get this crop removed from the field and in a safe spot. Grain bins help provide that safe space for our grain inside because they are protecting the grain from mother nature, whether that be wind, rain, snow, from getting inside and starting to cause moisture problems inside the bin, as well as here at the bottom of the bin, where we are keeping out the pests and rodents from going inside the bin and starting to eat some of the corn, or also starting to deposit some of their leave behinds inside the bin. The only time I actually remember an animal getting inside one of our bins was last fall inside this bin right here. A squirrel must have somehow ran up the ladder and there was just a small hole next to the manhole on the top of this bin. And he somehow snuck through there and got in that bin but couldn't figure out his way out. So when I came back to check this bin about two months after harvest, guess who was ready to come out of that bin and ready to come out now? That squirrel. So he came jumping at me. Thankfully, I think he died on the way down, but that's the only time I actually remember a squirrel or an animal getting inside one of our bins. So storage and preservation are the first reason why farmers build these large grain bins. But the second reason, and this is probably my favorite reason because it's one of the most unique ones and one of the most beneficial ones for our farm is flexibility. So now that you know, not only all of my corn and soybean fields are gonna be harvested this fall, that also means all the neighbor's corn and soybeans fields are gonna be harvested this fall, which means there is going to be a ton of grain that wants and needs to go to town because not all farmers have a bin site that can hold all their grain and some farmers don't have any bins. In some of those situations where we as farmers don't have enough grain storage to put all of our crop or a farmer that has no grain storage, what we end up doing is hauling that grain straight from the field into town which often results in usually waiting hours in line at elevators, ethanol plants, processing plants to unload our freshly harvested grain. So if that is a scenario, which has happened to us a couple times in the past couple years with beans for sure, where all of our trucks are full, waiting in line to get dumped, eventually what happens is we have to stop combining 
because we have nowhere else to empty our grain into until our grain trucks are unloaded in town and brought back out to the field. And this is where the flexibility portion comes in because it's nice having grain bins at your own personal farm because it doesn't matter how long the line is in town because if all your grain is coming back to your farm to fill a bin, you're just making turns back to your own bin site so you don't have to worry about how long the line is. Not only that, but if it's Saturday, eight o'clock at night and the elevator's closed or full, if you still got room in your own bin, you can keep harvesting, getting the job done. The second form of flexibility grain bins give you is that in terms of pricing. What I'm able to do with grain bins is put the grain inside the bin and be patient and wait for a price that I'm more willing to sell at. The prices are usually the lowest at harvest time. And if you think of it similar to like a farmer's market where there is say 30 vendors trying to sell you the same apple, a lot of times they're going to have to lower their price because if all the apples are the same, you're just going to go to whoever has the lowest price. And that's no different than the corn and beans that I load up inside these bins. During harvest, when a bunch of farmers are trying to harvest their crops and haul to town, the end users start to lower their price. But if I can store my grain here at the farm and wait until the next summer months, eight, nine months later, oftentimes I'm able to get a higher price for that exact same grain from the fall. Now I said that the price usually goes up, but that's definitely not always the case. I'm also talking about the localized basis, which is the local supply and demand of the grain as elevators start to figure out where the grain is, where it needs to go. There's usually like a 15 cent improvement right after harvest was what we call basis appreciation. But because I'm trying to keep this video short and simple, I'm not gonna go into that here. So those are the two flexibility reasons I gave for why farmers build grain bins. The first one being that way they're able to keep harvest going and not waiting in line at elevators, as well as number two, which is flexibility and pricing. They're able to price grain out of their bins all the next season whenever they're ready. And oftentimes they're receiving a higher price, which I'm saying is the basis appreciation on their grain. The third and final reason I'm gonna go into why farmers build grain bins is cost savings. Oftentimes where farmers build grain bins, it allows them the opportunity to build a grain dryer like the one that I'm currently sitting in. With the grain dryer, we're able to take higher moisture corn out of a field, say 17, 18% water content, run it through our grain dryer to the ideal 15, 16%, and then store it in our grain bin rather than taking it to town and taking a dock or a reduction in price because our grain is too high in water content. Even in instances where a farmer doesn't own a grain dryer, a lot of times if they have a grain bin, they're able to put a bin fan like this centrifugal fan here on this bin, which can pull some of the moisture out of the grain in the bin and reduce some of the moisture content of the grain and prevent them from being docked when they do take the grain out of the bin so it's at the desired moisture content level. And the cost savings really can start to add up because removing just some of that water content, like the water here on this mat from our grain, in town, oftentimes they charge about five cents per point that they need to bring the grain down to either 15 and a half or 15. So you're talking five cents per bushel per point, which can really add up. And that's why here at the farm, We've invested in some of our own resources to do it because we can do it for now a fraction of the cost. Not only that, but by having different grain bins on a farm, last fall we harvested one field. It was about 13% moisture corn, which is way below the threshold of 15 and a half where we take most of our corn. Put that in that bin right here. Next field we combine, 17%. Put it in this bin right here. You know what we did this spring when we started unloading grain out of these two bins? We started to blend the grain off in the semi. That way, 13% grain, 17% grain. We now have 15% corn that we're not getting docked for in the one bin, and we're bringing up the moisture content from the other bin. The potential benefits of just owning a bin don't just stop with being able to dry your grain. Remember earlier when I said, if you don't store your grain at your own farm, when you bring it to town, you have to sell it? Well, that's not exactly true either. As a farmer, if we end up hauling some grain to town and don't want to sell it right away, we do have an option to put it on storage at the elevator, which is basically me paying the grain elevator about five cents per bushel per month to use their grain bin until I'm ready to sell, which a lot of times the best price is in June or July or eight, nine months later. 
five cents times eight months, you're talking 40 cents worth just alone in paying for storage on some grain at the elevator. Clearly, there are some significant cost savings when it comes to building bins versus using a commercial elevator. Not only that, but some of the operational efficiencies I talked about with being able to unload faster at harvest, being able to hopefully get a price post-harvest, there's some significant benefits and reasons as to why we as farmers put up these structures called grain bins. I should really mention here, there is a lot of maintenance and upkeep of looking over all the belts, motors, pulleys, grease zerks, sweep augers, everything associated with the bin site here before harvest, drain harvest, to make everything work like it should, which if you want to learn more about how all this stuff works, what it's going to look like come harvest, I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that way I can see you in the next one.